You're listening to the Andre Segovia Show. program everyone i am andres the honest broker in this episode i got a big update to give you because it was not the original topic i was going to cover on the production schedule but i had to bring this up because it is breaking news and you have to be aware of it uh, because it might have some ramifications down the road uh, for uh, sales transactions on the real estate side. But before I get into that, I don't want you to miss out on my interview that I have with uh, Rent Prep. Um, I left links through my socials. If you missed out on that, I'm going to leave it in the show notes accompanying this episode at www.theandrosegovic.com. So you don't miss out what I had to say in my interview with Rent Prep, where I went on to discuss uh, rent control. So Rent Prep is a screening service. This is basically a plug-in for them. They didn't ask me to do this, but I'm doing it for them. Uh, tenant screening services. So if you if you have units you're looking to rent out, uh, Rent Prep is one of the services that is able to do a background check for your applicants, and they do a thorough background check, check with the landlords and stuff, and they do it at what I feel are reasonable rates. So you can check them out as well. They didn't pay me for this promotion. I've just been using them for two years and i've looked to them for my services i use them exclusively now because they beat out the other services that i used so check them out at www.rentprep.com okay another thing is that if you've been missing out on my youtube channel if you're not subscribed to my youtube channel you should because i got content up there for your consumption especially if you're isolated at this time if you're quarantined i got stuff for you to be able to help pass the time because I did a reaction video to PragerU's Fleeing California documentary, which uh, hits close to home because this is where I live. And, um, and especially a lot of the filming spots that they did the documentary are streets that I know and I grew up on. So I recommend that you check out my, my reaction video on that. But most of all is the Maiden Voyage launch of my rebooted Critic Corner segment. So that's where I get to just unwind, not having to deal with the business of things, and just get into the entertainment of things. So I brought on a friend of mine who's also a film aficionado to discuss contagion movies and we kind of go off on a tangent a little bit that's kind of what he and i tend to do but we went off on a tangent a bit uh, talking about military movies as well but we created a list for you to be able to go down some list if you're into those like oh I, did, did you see contagion did you see contagion well if you want to watch contagion as one of those movies there's other films like that that right up your alley that you might enjoy as well even some that you didn't know contain contagion elements to it and literature as well so it's not everything's about viewing pick up a book people pick up my book the andrew segovia show transcripts of the early days available on amazon.com is that a plug-in for my book absolutely you know that so you can check all those things out anyway i'm going to leave links to my book links to the on the Critic Corner episode, and 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 actually, I mean, you know what? I'm going to embed that into the post of the show notes. So make sure you go to my website to check that out. Okay, so with that all out of the way, I wanted to very quickly address. I don't want to elaborate too much into this because uh, it could go many different ways. But I just want to make aware of what I felt was going to happen, and I touched on this in my news roundups previously. And even I brought it up in my interview with Rent Prep, and now I'm proven right. So that's why I had to email blast my clients and partners to make them aware of the situation because they need to be aware of this. So back in November, there was an, uh, an incident that occurred in Alameda County. Um, there was uh, there were two families, single moms with kids. Uh, they um, technically it's breaking into because it's trespassing on a property that's not theirs. But the front door was unlocked, and because it was, they entered a property that was that was vacated that belonged to someone else and they entered the the house and they occupied it that is basically what is termed in our industry as squatting so this started getting a lot of attention because um the community at large was in support of them and trying to protect them from being evicted well they were uh there were volunteer security guards that would protect them in the house or outside the house uh 24 7 so eventually, by the order of the Alameda County judge, they were ordered evicted uh, mid-January this year. And uh, the police had arrived in force. The community was there present. And because there was a lot of pressure, 
Uh, this was a political powder keg. Uh, the owner did the process of evicting them, but then sat down with the city to be able to negotiate a deal that legally allowed the the people that squatted to keep the house. And because they got their way, the people that is, they ended up keeping the house. I knew this was gonna inspire other people. And that's exactly what they did because uh, the, the group, that, well, the, the mothers that um, occupied the property went on to become a group called Moms for Housing. This ended up making some national news, but it wasn't really uh, widely covered. Well, this became basically like a rallying cry and what I termed that uh, these these people wanted to become the Rosa Parks of the housing affordability crisis because they need a place to live and they couldn't afford some place to live and they got their way by squatting in a house and getting national attention because of this. So uh, uh, just over a weekend ago, LA Times reported that uh, a Hispanic family did the very same thing uh, in El Serrano in Los Angeles. So they're squatting and they have no intention of leaving and they even announced as much as they intend to occupy more vacant houses. Well, these groups are funded. Um, there's a political action group that's supporting them in their efforts to occupy vacant property. So I bring this to attention. Look, it's, squatting is unlawful. It's illegal, it's trespassing, and when you're entering a property that's not yours, it's called breaking and entering. So there's a lot of different laws that are being broken to do this, uh, well, this behavior is just all law breaking to occupy a property that does not belong to them in a way to strong arm the owner to give it to them. So I, on, a, on its face, I am completely against it. I also understand that people need housing. This is not the approach to solve that issue because if by that logic if that logic ever worked which is not common sense that means that during this time of lockdown i have every right to break into my local supermarket to break into the local um, cleaning supply store and take everything that i need at whim because i need it meanwhile i'm hurting other people in the process that actually do need it and can't afford to buy them and should but because I want it and I need it by this logic of breaking into houses that belong to somebody else, then I'm entitled to all these different things. That's the problem. This whole idea of entitlement, um, because there is some language that's mixed into what these uh, um, activists, as I'm calling them, are doing, because they are activists. They have expressed as much as they intend to keep this up and they want to occupy more houses. That in of itself is called activism. And entirely breaking rules to get their way, that's called civil disobedience. And it's not gonna go well for them if this goes down that route it'll it's gonna put a strain on the legal system and it's gonna put a strain on business relationships so i do not advise anybody to attempt such things so please calm this down on the flip side for those agents that are representing uh owners that are selling property that's vacant i advise you to take steps to protect the property that you've been entrusted to sell. To make sure that the showings that are happening, that those agents that you're following up with them, making sure that they are locking those doors, that if, if it comes out of your pocket to, 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 protect, to protect the owner, I recommend that if, even if it's out of your pocket or you can write, put it in agreement with, your, um, with the seller, that you would install a monitoring system that will be compensated to you uh, at the close of escrow or whatever. You know, these things you can't build into the contract so long as the two parties are agreeing. Uh, in my case, in, in one transaction, I actually put it up myself because I wanted to look after the property. So there are steps you can take to monitor the vacant property better because there is no telling if and when this is going to happen. This is beyond just burglary. This is, this is trespassing and occupying property that does not belong to anyone except the seller in trying to trade to somebody else. So I can see this affecting down the road properties that are uh, vacant, that are being sold or even rented. So I suggest for all my colleagues out there to please be advised of this and take precautions. 
So I don't want to delve more into this issue because it becomes a political issue and I don't want to do this on the main show. If I sound off on this, I'll probably do that on off the record. So I suggest you check out my website, www.theandressegobe.com. If you haven't signed up, you can, but for now it's free for all. So if I do an episode about this, be sure you will be able to see it on the, the list of episodes that pop up. You won't have to sign in or anything. You don't need an account. You'll be able to pull it up. There it is. So that's that for this one. Uh, during this uh, time of, uh, of, of lockdown and pandemonium, um, just uh, continue to stay positive. Life continues on. And of course, I take this very seriously. So look after those that uh, um, are less able to help those that you can. And of course, keep a social distance because you never know what you don't know. And that's the thing that we, uh, the more information we get, the more equipped we will be to address this issue. But for now, in trying to stop the spread, I know it's tough. It's also the thing to do. But mass hysteria does not help a situation. So please don't hoard. Think of your other, um, your, your other Americans uh, th- that, are, that are going through this together. Because together, we can overcome. Together, we will persevere. Thank you so much for listening to this episode of the Under Segovia Show. For all my real estate resources, go to segoviares.com. Segoviares.com. This is the Andrew Segovia Show. I will see you on the next one.